Now I'd like to round out this section about costs by a really interesting example, which is the cost of sending something to space. Now this is a graph showing the launch cost per kilogram of payload for different rockets between the first rockets in 1961 and just before the present day. What you can see is that typically it costs about $20,000 per kilogram to put things in space, which seems a bit high. I mean, space is only a few hundred kilometers straight up. Going a few hundred kilometers horizontally, it only costs you like $100. So 20,000, 200, that seems awfully expensive. Sure, it's harder going up, but really that much harder? But for a long time, people thought, well, maybe that's just what it costs. The technology hasn't really changed very much. You take large tubes full of highly explosive chemicals and set fire to them and watch to let the flames go out at the bottom. So maybe it's inevitable that the price would stay high for such a long period of time. Or so you would have thought until you got to 2010 and the last 10 years when one company, SpaceX, led by Elon Musk, has managed to drop the price dramatically. From about $20,000 a kilogram, it's got down to under $2,000 per kilogram, an order of magnitude drop in price. And if they can get their Starship, the latest rocket working reusably as it's planned, then in another couple of years, it might be down by another order of magnitude, a hundred times cheaper. So this is a real mystery. How is it that the price of space travel basically went nowhere for decade after decade after decade, and then suddenly has collapsed? I mean, the collapse has been so dramatic that the number of launches has dramatically increased. This has completely revolutionized space. Well, our standard theory is that uh, the US spent lots of money back in the Apollo era, and then their budget has been cut off. But that's not really true. This is NASA's yearly budget, and sure enough, there was a big increase in spending um, in the 1960s for the Apollo program. But then since then, it's settled down at between 15 and $20 billion a year, so that's not very much. And for 40 years, they've been spending 15 to $20 billion a year at NASA, and yet, over that entire time, they didn't bring the cost of space down. In fact, it went up from the Saturn V to the space shuttle, the price went up. It's, it's worse than that. Time after time, ambitious new programs were launched. Some president would go and stand, we are going to go to the moon or to Mars or to an asteroid or somewhere or other in the next 5, 10, 15 years. And the project was ambitiously started. People started designing things. And then the costs blew out and blew out and blew out. Uh, if there, and then suddenly people have said, well, it's actually going to cost $150 billion to go to the moon. Well, maybe we won't do that after all. So basically, no new rocket designs were launched by NASA between the Space Shuttle in 1981 and the SLS, Space Launch System, in 2022. So that's decade after decade. And the Space Launch System, which eventually flew in 2022, is a disaster. Here is its takeoff. Basically, it's using shuttle technology. The engines at the bottom down here are space shuttle main engines. In fact, they are surplus engines from the space shuttle program that have been sitting in storage for decades. The side tubes are solid rocket boosters and again are basically exactly the same thing as the rockets, uh, side rockets for the space shuttle. So there is nothing new about this. It's using old rockets, old technology. It's not advanced science at all. And yet it's hideously expensive. Um, very, very late and not particularly capable. Sure, it launched, but... Ugh. The comparison with SpaceX could not be more stark. Here is the, the SpaceX's uh, most recent takeoff of the uh, Starship. This is its fourth trial flight. And you can see the deluge system. The rocket takes off. Now, this is an entirely new set of rockets. This is not just rehashing a 50-year-old technology. These are new rockets. They've pu pushed the science on many grounds. They use different types of fuel, cooled farther than anyone else, new rocket engines that are more efficient than anyone else, grid fins and all sorts of things like this, large numbers of small engines. So it's utterly different and far more technologically advanced. Then it does things that the SLS can't do. You split off the uh, the bottom section, which then relights its rockets and starts manoeuvring back to land on Earth.
So the rocket, so the, the bottom stage, which has most of the engines and most of the cot, fires its rockets again and comes back down to the atmosphere, steering itself. Here it comes down, forming bottom fast through the sonic boom, relights its engines. Now, for this particular flight, they, it was a trial flight, so they just tried to land it over the ocean. They didn't try and bring it back to land, but hopefully with future flights, they'll be able to land it back where it took off, capture it, refuel it, and launch it all over again only hours later, just like an aircraft. Meanwhile, the top part of it, Starship, was designed also to be reusable, and it's going to try and come back in through the atmosphere. Here it comes in through the atmosphere. By itself, getting these data is incredible. Here it comes in, plasma. Now, it actually survived. As you can see, it took a lot of damage as it came back in through the atmosphere, but it survived and was able to come to a fairly uh, controlled landing. And again, in future missions, they'll try and land this one back where it took off and capture it and have it ready to reuse in a fairly short period of time. Though, as you can see, this one's not looking so good for that. So, in incredible contrast, SpaceX's Starship is new technology. They've actually pushed the edge in many ways. NASA is supposed to develop new technology, but really hasn't. Back in the early days, it did. Back in the 60s, lots of new technologies, for example, many of the early silicon chips and, and, and um, solar cells uh, made them initial money by selling to NASA. But for a long time now, they've been rehashing old technology, using literally old engines and old technology, not doing new things at all. Then there's the cost. The NASA space launch system costs at least 32 billion, and that's not counting all the money spent on things previous to that were fed into it. SpaceX Starship was also funded with NASA money, but only about $4 billion. The cost per launch for the space launch system is somewhat obfuscated, but it's probably at least $2 billion, whereas SpaceX and Starship, if they can get reusability working properly, is going to be under $20 billion and possibly as low as $5 billion. So we're talking about a factor of eight in development costs at least, but a factor of... 20 million as opposed to 2 billion, a factor of 100 in cost per launch. Development, I mean, technically they both took about a year, um, 10 years, but in practice the space launch system used so much old technology that it's been decades in the making. Payload to LEO, the SpaceX Starship carries a lot more material to low Earth orbit and will be fully reusable. Of course, it's a caveat, it hasn't actually demonstrated full reusability yet, but it's come pretty close, so I think there's probably not too much doubt it will achieve that in the near future. So, the question is, why did NASA go so wrong, and how was a private company, SpaceX, able to dramatically transform things?